Oh, hi, Bunny. Hey, what's up? Ted and Jim here. Whoa. Shredder had snowboarding. Ted wasn't expecting me. I wasn't to, expecting to, that. To, for me to be in my professional gear. But I, but I always like to do things very professionally and dress like a snowboarder. So I thought I would put this on because this is so serious what we're doing. Um, so basically we have a bunch of questions here and stuff so you get to know a little bit about us. So uh, we'll start with Ted because he's a serious guy and I'm the more serious as you can tell. So Ted, uh, what would be, what's your basic background, you know, for people sitting out there? And actually Michelle could ask the questions, but go ahead. Okay, so uh, my background for snowboarding is that I've been teaching snowboarding for the last 10 years. Uh, and the, my background and my profession was as a uh, martial arts instructor for, what, is that, that to look that way? Look no, do a wee demonstration. Oh, okay. <laughs> you can't keep doing that. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. the, the background of using, using, learning how to use a body for, for a, a reason, some ideas, and getting how to, getting how to get coordinated into some, something that you want to do. Uh, so I've been doing that for the last 45 years. All right. So that pretty much is where our similarities are. For the last 40 years, since I started teaching uh, skiing because snowboarding wasn't here, our similarities are the teaching aspect. And then eventually I went into snowboarding because I found it easier on the body, except when I started. And that was rough on the body. And that's one reason that we want to kind of get into having a channel and helping you people prevent the, uh, the things that we went through in order to learn. Good examples, I learned to ski in Michigan downhill but I didn't learn to stop until I hit grandma's fence and the feet went through and then the body stopped on the fence and that was a downhill run and that's how it started. We don't want you to run into fences and grandma's not here anymore, so we can't use her yard. All right, so. So I think you answered the second question, but anyway, so the third question is, why do you recommend lessons, Ted? Well, I, 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 personally was self-taught and so that was six and a half hours of practicing falling down and it hurt a lot <laughs> and there when I eventually did have lessons uh, it was amazing how much I didn't understand that I was trying to do just because I because you watch somebody and you say oh I could do that and well you can sort of but there's an easier way so that's what we're after the easiest way Right, so once what about again, you, Bunny Jim? Once, once again, we have a similar experience. I was self-taught, I was self-beat up, I was self-crash. I couldn't come home and tell my wife who's on the other side of this camera what I did today, because she'd say, well, you stupid old man, stop doing that stuff. So um, self-teaching has a lot of pain to it, and our, our job for the future, getting into the winter season, will be to reduce the pain. And when the goggles are up, you know I'm more serious. Goggles are down, I'm back in the air. So similarities are exactly the same reasons. I want to save you your body. What he really means to say, he wants to make it fun. Yes. Okay. <laughs> right, Jim, uh, Ted, sorry. What makes a good lesson? What do you think makes a good lesson, Ted? So one of the first things we do as an instructor is you, you, ask, you ask who's coming to do a lesson what they want to learn and then try to figure out how you are going to put this thing together that they can get to that goal that they, they've set for themselves. And if they've set this goal and it's, it's way, way out in the future, I want to do cork, th you know, 360s or something, you still have to learn how to ride that snowboard in the beginning. And we'll, we'll take it all back down to that, and then we'll introduce something that might be the next step that would show that here's where you got to go. So that would put in a lesson together like that and something that could be done in the amount of time that you have and something that had uh, an appropriate, an appropriate uh, terrain so that you're not working on something that's just frightening or doesn't move. Um, I, you, all those things have to be taken into consideration. So. Okay, Bunster Jim. Okay, so for me, uh, a good lesson would be not taking a lesson from your friend. 
because <laughs> they'll leave you sitting on the mountain somewhere way See up ya. high, and they'll tell you, well, you're doing great. They're blowing smoke. You know where they're blowing it. And uh, it, it won't be good. You'll be crying. They'll snowboard away. Two or three runs later, they'll come back. You might have moved a little, but if not, hopefully patrol has come by, put you in a toboggan, took you back down the hill where you belong, and now your lesson will get a lot better. Oh, well, thank you, uh, Jim. So next, Ted, what in your opinion stops a person from reaching their goal during a lesson? Oh, there's lots of things. Uh, so so one, of the, one of the joys of doing this is that most people come to a lesson and they're enthusiastic. They are going to do something new. They're all excited. They might be a little frightened. Um, but they're coming to something new. And then as that lesson progresses, you, I would be trying to make it that much more comfortable. So there's a sense of, of comfort, even though you're doing something that's totally new and, and could be scary. And it's trying to keep that fear level down, because that, that comes to all of us. Um, so generally it's to, to walk, get somebody through that lesson and have them learn something new, have them feel good about learning it, have them understand what they've learned, and, uh, and looking forward to the next lesson. Looking forward to yeah. the next thing. Cool, Ted. What about you, okay, Jim? Okay, well, basically, Ted okay. hit on them on a long version. I'll make the short version. Safety, fun, fun, laughing, smiling, relationships. No drinking. What? No drinking. What? No drinking? Don't go to the bar and have a drink before your license. Oh, hey. Oh, well, you, you might have, think that, that drinking, depends drinking where will make teaching. it fun. But if I'm on the receiving end of that drunk sliding into me, I don't consider it fun. Anyhow, so safety, fun, and learning. And we put learning on the last part of the aspect. Uh, and learning is something that you will do during a lesson. And immediately after, when you go back to doing what you were doing, you will have forgotten what you learned. We see it time and time again. Great student, great ride, really cool, looking good. And we look out the window and go, what's that? What happened? So where's the problem? The problem is, you have to practice what you learned today to use it tomorrow.